good morning everyone so like all mondays we are starting with a very again a very important topic uh, how to identify problems in the continuation of the research in palliative medicine and uh, for this uh, we have invited dr hari raju uh, hari raju is uh, our colleague and he is assistant professor in preventive oncology at national cancer institute to aims new delhi uh, before i read his cv i just want to tell you that uh, in uh, within a span of two months dr raju with his uh, colleague dr jitender and dr pallavi with four scientists they have started a excellent initiative at a uh, nci new uh, jhaja uh, and you know they are really working hard and this initiative is to screen and uh, prevent uh, uh, especially we have started uh, besides monday to friday opd the bear any female or any male can walk in to screen them we have started an initiative that to uh, to um, uh, screen and uh, prevent our own employee and this uh, this camp is still going on we have started on 22nd of august for two weeks and uh, it is what we result says that it's really beneficial so early detection and screening so this is what and dr raju is extremely hard working and whatever he plan he is executing immediately so beside this he is also a talented person and i read his contribution to science that he is community health assessment and occupational exposure in this area he has conducted community health assessment project with you is like near jhajjar and around uh, beyond jhajjar which use various quantity and qualitative method in obtaining community health indications and community voices regarding health behaviors he is involved in research projects studying effect studying effect of occupation exposure among garments workers of bangladesh military occupational exposure in this area he has applied new survey methodologies such as natural uh, language processing ecological momentary assessment and big data analytical method to analyze to large electronic database in studying various health effects of deployment such as tbi als early onset dementia etc among the post 9/11 era ward oh very good is for even i was not knowing raju <laughs> okay now now next in the area of cancer epidemiology and prevention he has done analyzed he has analyzed ethnic disparity among female breast cancer mortality rates in united states where it has gone okay united states uh, and effects of country level attributes and he is also currently working on community cancer education and screening project in rural village of haryana so you can see that with the uh, people like uh, dr raju if they are in this country i think one day will come where we will have a freedom from cancer and we will be able to do early detection and prevention on in the early stage thank you very much raju for for accepting our invitation and in coming early in the morning 6:30 it's very odd but this is the only time which suits everybody thank you raju thanks a lot thank you so much ma'am thanks for uh, for the kind introduction and shall i start or? yes you can start yeah. you okay. can share start share this right thank you so much dr sushma patnagar for that kind introduction and uh, i'm very happy again once again i mean to be part of this ctc lectures and uh, even i learned a lot i learn a lot uh, during these lectures the series are very well designed for any researchers to uh, have such a knowledge of what a research is how a research should be performed what are the good methodologies of the research so it's always uh, refreshing as well to go through this lecture series uh, so the uh, so i'll quickly jump into my uh, topic uh so my, the topic given is uh, problem identification concept development again a very important topic uh, this is the starting point for most of the research uh, so uh, so i hope uh, that will really help you so uh, basically the scientific investigation so whatever the research we plan to do uh, can be basically divided into two basic types one is uh, the data you collect uh the, is simply the data collection on a defined population either it can be a group of participants or a group of uh, in a population or a group of patients 
so it is only uh, you you collect the data and then uh, and then you you uh, give the results of the data you analyze it and give the results of the data the other thing is a specific experimental uh, treatment you do or or some specific investigating uh, investigation or intervention you do uh, in to a certain part of the population and then you compare it either either express the results of that population or compare it to a different population so uh, most of us we do uh, this kind of uh, two basic uh, scientific investigations so to con conduct such kind of uh, research in our in our academic career or in your practice or anywhere uh, i think it's very important uh, to have a basic training regarding how to uh, do this kind of re uh, research or these trials or uh, uh, or this thesis um, or, or your projects so you need to have certain kind of training i think uh, this is what the all the ctc uh, lecture series are based upon uh, and also you need some experience in your field you have to know the area on which where you want to target or you want to uh, do the research and also you need to uh, identify what is the problem in hand that you want to address it so uh, so uh, today's lecture is mostly based upon addressing these uh, these issues uh, how you can identify a problem or how you can conceptualize that problem uh, to develop a research project or to develop a research plan uh, according to that thing okay so uh, first of all i think uh, for any research to be conducted um, you need a research proposal it is a very uh, you you will develop a research proposal so which is a very formal way of uh, uh, getting your thoughts uh, uh, and uh, compiling all your thoughts into a systematic way and uh, you go through the conception of the problem and then how you want to address that problem how you want to uh, what kind of things you need to uh, do to solve the problem so it is a formal way this document is a of, uh, it provides you the uh, proper framework of uh, what you want to do how you want to do on whom you want to do and uh, what are the timelines you want to do so this is called a research proposal uh, so uh, and it also serves as a public statement of what you want to uh, intend to do and your methodology so it is always uh, so it becomes a public statement because whenever you register this uh, uh, to any clinical trial or uh, or uh, you submit it to the ethics and all so it becomes a public document so it states you uh, so it tells you okay this researcher is wants to do this and these are the methodologies he is applying and all so this serves as a, a public statement and again it also tells you like what are, what permissions do you need so even for ethics uh, ethics approval and all you need this research proposal to be submitted so most of the research we do is most on the is on the human participants which uh, definitely require the either um, uh, approval from the ethics or at least uh, uh, at least saying that the ethics is not required you have to go through this process and also uh, for a lot of the uh, if you want to seek funds or the apply for the project uh, project applications through icmr or dst and all also you have to submit a research proposal so a research proposal becomes a very important part of the document of your research so uh, and then uh, what are the component uh, that has uh, this uh, research proposal contains uh, is the title of the project uh, a rationale or background why you want to do this project and why it is important and then come in, and then the actual problem what you want to address and then the aims and methods of how to uh, address that problem and then in what timeline you want to address this problem so this is the components of the uh, research proposal and as you can see so to develop such kind of research proposal you need to have a research problem uh, so you have to formulate a research problem which is the backbone of this research proposal and based on that only you can develop all the other parts of your uh, research proposal so as you can see the research proposal contains of the initial idea uh, how uh, so, so it based on your initial idea and then you have to develop conduct some uh, either external review or literature review i think the previous lecture what dr navin has given uh, is his inc has included all the systematic review how you can conduct a systematic review so it is a part of that kind of only you need not do a complete systematic review to uh, to get to your problem but you need to do some literature review what is there in the literature what uh, regarding your problem uh, what is already there what is the knowledge you know what are the gaps that are there in the knowledge so then only you can formulate your problem statement so a problem statement uh, or identifying the research problem is a core component of the research proposal 
then only you can develop uh, the rest of your research proposal. Uh, so this, uh, this problem statement or the research problem is a brief summary of your research question. Uh, how, how, what is your basic fundamental research question you want to address and how you want to solve that and what are the, um, and, and also uh, the justification. Uh, very important thing is the background of the justification. You want to say that why this problem is important. Okay, so this, uh, so the research, uh, the problem statement becomes a very important component. I'm repeating this, so it becomes a very important component of your research proposal. So once you have your problem statement, once you want to know what, what you have want to address it, then you have to write down that broad statement into one sentence, uh, which becomes your aim of your research question or, or the project or the, uh, or the research. So that uh, one sentence aim uh, to develop, to get to that one sentence aim, you have to be very knowledgeable about your problem and how to, you want to address it. Uh, then it becomes the aim of your project and the objectives are uh, how you want to, the methods or the steps required to achieve that aim. Uh, so uh, this becomes uh, very important. So once you, once you identify the problem, you have to gather all the uh, rationale and the um, background of it and how you can put it into one sentence aim of your project which is a very uh, like a label of your project because most of the reviewers and all uh, they look at this aim and see and get to know what your the essence of your project is uh, and then you uh, come to the objectives how you achieve them again uh, these objectives should be smart uh, the smart objectives are called they should be specific what you want to address and uh, the methodology should be there and they should be measurable. You have to uh, address only that. I mean, you can only do which you can measure it. If you can't measure uh, any outcome or anything, then you can't perform that one. And they should be achievable. You should not, your objective should not be that vague that you can't achieve what you want or you, you want it in the project. And they have to be very relevant to the topic, what uh, you want to address it. And they have to be time bound. So you have to achieve those, those things in a specific time period also. So this all uh, makes your objectives the smart objectives, okay? And then you have to also know the methods to address that one. So, uh, so suppose you are planning for a, uh, to, address, uh, to address a research question. You have to also know how, how you, want to, you want to measure like palliative outcomes. So you have to know what are the measures or uh, methods to measure those outcomes and how you can analyze them. You have to also have the knowledge of your met of the methodology to address uh, that so that you can write down your project. And then in the timeline, so in what timeline you want to uh, finish this, uh, these ones. So uh, again, identifying the research problem becomes the first and important uh, step of the research process. So it is like an identification of destination before you're taking the journey. So where you want to go, where you want to achieve, you need to know that. And if you're solid in that one, then you can definitely, your project becomes then a definitely a smooth walk uh, from there. So it has to be very well formulated so that you can achieve a good study out of your uh, idea. So uh, how to identify, so how to identify this research problem? Because most of this, I think, uh, uh, I, I hope most of you are in the uh, early stages of your career and you want to uh, uh, do, uh, most of you are in the, uh, in the DM who are doing the DM or even in the, in the early parts of your career. Most of us are again stuck with, okay, what should I do? What, what uh, topic should I choose for my thesis or what should, topic should I choose my project and all. So identifying that uh, a problem is a very important concept and it takes a lot of time. Uh, most of the time goes on uh, where you want to, uh, how you can identify that uh, topic area or the focus area or the research interest of your, uh, or research interest of yours, which you can develop further so that you can uh, grow in that area. So uh, it becomes a very important component of your uh, research um, uh, part. So your proposal should be very uh, rooted in some question that needs to be answered or some problem that needs to be solved or some issue that needs to be addressed. Okay, so, and, uh, and basically again, as I said, uh, it can be as simple uh, as uh, like just seeking answers to a relatively straightforward question. So it is simply a survey kind of research where you want to address a question and you ask multiple people uh, about that. You just do a sur uh, survey questionnaire and then uh, finish it. Uh, with, uh, I mean, analyze it, the answers of the survey. 
or it can vary up to a very deep understanding of the complex analytical problems. I mean, you want to see the relationships that go into the factors, what are the factors that are affecting, uh, suppose, for example, the palliative care outcomes in your clinic, is it the age, is it the stage where they're presenting, or is it the post socioeconomic status of the patients? So, uh, so this can vary, vary from a basic kind of research to a very complicated or uh, which needs an analytical um, kind of uh, knowledge to answer this one. So you can choose between uh, these various and it develops on, uh, on your deeper understanding of your discipline, like where, uh, in, the, in the area you want to work or the focus area you want to develop. So you need to have a good understanding of your core discipline and, and at least the, uh, the part of the uh, problem where you want to work on. And also at least some part, uh, kind of analytical knowledge is also required. To be a good researcher, it is, uh, it is always important to have that kind of uh, analytical knowledge, uh, at least the basic knowledge uh, to know how you want to address your problem, what are the methods that go to address your problem or what is the research design or the study design. And even to talk to a biostatistician, uh, I mean, definitely most of you uh, have, uh, might have experience to talking to a statistician. It becomes very difficult to talk to a statistician. I mean, because unless you express the things you want to, uh, you want to get it from him, uh, he can't uh, give you those kind of outputs. So even to uh, talk to the statistician, you need to have some understanding of uh, this kind of uh, statistical background or the analytical methods that uh, that are required to conduct your research. So it's not necessarily you need to be a biostatistician to do that, but at least you need to have understanding of. Even from the literature review, you can see, okay, these are the methods that go to answer my kind of, my, this kind of research question, which I'm choosing these things. So uh, again, uh, so what are the fundamental properties of a research proposal? Uh, they should be a real and a justifiable issue. Definitely you can't uh, uh, choose a small topic which is not relevant to the population or anything. So again, uh, the literature review comes back here. Uh, again, the background is very important. Most of the uh, people who do this research proposal, they, they don't pay that much uh, attention to the background and the rationale of the study. This becomes a very important part. I mean, uh, unless you justify, if, if you can show, uh, show the background or the rationale is being so important to, uh, that, and then it becomes your problem is so important to be addressed, then uh, it draws the attention of the, both all the reviewers and, and also the public, when you publish this research, uh, the, even the public are, uh, get, um, get attention, gets drawn uh, to, to your problem that you want to address. So it should be a good, real, a real and a justifiable issue. Okay, and it should relate to the body of the uh, uh, previous knowledge is there. So uh, it, can't, it, can't, it can be a new, I mean, the basic sciences and all, uh, they do develop the new kind of research, but most of our research and comes from the prior knowledge. So again, the literature review and the background will tell you like, what is the existing knowledge we have so far? Is there a gap in the knowledge that you uh, want to address and how your research adds to that gap in the knowledge? or how it adds to the uh, current knowledge uh, or uh, this thing. And it should not be just a repetition of what has been already done in the, in the, in the past. Uh, it, your study should not be just a repetition of what is uh, already known uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in the literature. <clears throat> So, uh, and you have to have full understanding. Again, I said uh, some understanding of the analytical tools that go and how, what are the contribution you are making to the knowledge and what, as I mentioned, what your study adds to the knowledge, existing knowledge is also very important. And now uh, this uh, academic research, uh, uh, previously, I mean, it is, it is not just a scholarly endeavor or a practical activity. Now the research has become most, I mean, the world has become research focused nowadays. And so uh, there are ways to address such as social concerns, economic concerns, and also, and now with the uh, IPR and the commercial use, I mean, all you, even if you develop a survey, you can make it a patent and uh, you can, there can be commercial outcomes of, uh, suppose I want to develop a risk assessment. I want to develop an indigenous uh, breast cancer risk assessment for our Indian women population, which we don't have. We, we only follow uh, all the Western uh, risk assessment tools like the Gales tool or Brodacia and these kind of tools, which are again geared, uh, which are focused, uh, uh, which are based on the, uh, 
the different kind of ethnic population because the weights of the population that are mentioned there and all is, is completely different. Uh, so we can't simply replicate that tool here. So we have to develop our own indigenous tool. And once the tool is developed, that can be commercialized also. I mean, nowadays, a lot of uh, websites and all uh, have this kind of commercial uh, risk assessment uh, where you pay and get your risk assessed. So it also becomes uh, uh, the, uh, the commercial tools. Are, you, you can have a patent. Uh, nowadays, patents are very much important. And then you'll have the IPR, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, to, to the research you conduct. So you can own the research, what you're doing. It's no longer you just publish a paper and go away. So now you can own that, that research and you can be a part of that uh, uh, research forever. So that's why it's very important uh, to have that. Um, so again, saying uh, coming, uh, so because my topic is about problem identification, I'm only stressing on the ways you can uh, consolidate your ideas or uh, you can think on, ponder upon to have a, to form a good research uh, question, okay? So uh, in any, uh, so a problem identification should involve a proper studying of the problem. So you have to uh, know what, what uh, area you want to focus on or what is the gap you want to focus on. You have to do some research on that one. And then you have to define it from a number of perspectives. It is not like uh, one perspective. Uh, which your uh, advisor has mentioned you or which you got an idea, you got a friend has mentioned to you, but you have to work on the different perspectives of how you can address that problem. Uh, then you can get more ideas on how uh, you can, uh, so is it the proper way you're doing? Is it the most efficient way you want to address that? Uh, is, is the project what you're developing? Is it the, mm, uh, is it the, uh, an effective way or a smart way to achieve that research problem within the given specific time period because most of your thesis you have to finish it in two or three years and most of the projects also the the funding projects also end in two to three years so you have to uh, develop that kind of rationale to address whether you can finish your project uh, the methodology which you use can be done in that uh, in that time frame and then using different uh, theoretical frameworks to investigate it. As I said, uh, you need to uh, not just, there might not be a one way to solving it. Uh, you have to uh, say, think of different options, how you can best uh, address that problem. So having different and opposing viewpoints. So uh, always, again, uh, don't sit yourself and just write down the research problem. Talk to your colleagues, talk to your other co-investigators. Uh, having a team of uh, uh, your co-investigators, uh, which will help you in your research is also very much important. So even the students and all, you will have the mentors, you will have the co-investigators, co co-guides. You have to uh, take take into consideration uh, not just uh, go to them for the signing of the uh, thesis or those things you have to get proper input the mentors are there to give you such kind of input they're the people who are experienced uh, in these areas so they can help you in uh, in consolidating that research idea or the methodology where you want to address it so uh, and then uh, evaluate to assess the suitability i mean uh, so is the research idea or the research problem you have identified is it really uh, good? Is it uh, will it sustain it? And is it good to put the resources or efforts to it, or is it just a, a vague thing? So you have to be uh, you have to thinking in these aspects as well. And uh, so a research problem uh, is a clear expression about the area of concern, the condition that can be improved upon, or a difficulty that can be eliminated or a trouble question that exists in scholarly literature. So most of us, it is, uh, we pick up uh, from this, uh, again, the literature review, or from your daily practice, or from talking to your colleagues, you identify a problem, and then you develop on it, okay? So uh, it should be, a, again, uh, it should be an important one, and uh, a great deal of thinking should go into that, uh, into that topic uh, for identifying it. Uh, and, spec, uh, and it consumes a lot of energy and time and effort. So once you have developed that, uh, got that idea, once you uh, uh, achieve, uh, arrive to that aim, then I think most of the part of your part is done because that is the most important. Uh, uh, it takes a lot of time to, see, uh, to think, okay, this is what I want to do. And once you put down in the uh, paper and pen on that, 
uh, once you develop that aim, I think most of your work is done because once that aim is there, you know what 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 methods you need to do or what objectives uh, to achieve that aim. So uh, so that becomes a very important aspect. So. And then uh, for the beginners, uh, so because of the uh, limited knowledge of this research process, it becomes a, a difficult task uh, to identify that problem. And unpreparedness and unfamiliarity in that area can uh, can be a, a very difficult. Uh, so at that time, you, you need to reach out to your mentors or to your co-investigators or to the other experienced people who can guide you uh, in uh, these uh, problems. But you have to identify, I mean, identifying the core area, or the re, uh, focus area or the, uh, or the research interest area with which you want to grow or develop or to write uh, is, is your task only. So that comes from a lot of uh, literature review, uh, background search on the topic, what kind of uh, things are available. Uh, now, now with uh, uh, Google and uh, uh, with all the websites available, most of the literature is now available. You need not go to the libraries, pull out the journals and all. So now it's all available uh, on the web. So you can simply uh, sitting on your table, you can uh, do all this kind of research and identify that kind of uh, gap uh, in the area which you're looking for and you can choose your uh, focus area. So uh, uh, this is just, a, uh, I mean, uh, this is just a slide that says how to address a problem, which I think uh, it is, is applicable uh, in all the aspects. So you have to first accumulate the facts that are related to your research problem and whether these facts are relevant. Uh, so uh, if you search the word in the Google, you'll have a lot of things available, but uh, are these, so you have to gather the relevant facts, only the relevant facts that are suitable uh, to addressing your research question. And is there any relationship between those facts? So uh, now, uh, like, like, for example, you want to measure the palliative care outcome. So there are uh, different things that come, uh, there are different questionnaires that may uh, come up different like qu quality of life questionnaire or, or any other questionnaires that may be coming up. So you have to gather all these facts and you have to think what is the relationship between them? Can you go with one or can you go with a multiple thing? Or maybe maybe that will give you an idea. Maybe can you establish a relationship between the quality of life and the palliative care outcomes? So these are the ideas that come up uh, once you uh, go through them. So you have to trace any relationship between these facts and then you have to propose various explanations uh, for that, uh, for what it is there. And then uh, you have to have uh, through observation and analysis whether uh, these explanations are relevant uh, to that problem, how, how the, uh, the problem uh, can be solved. Uh, and then again, tracing the relationship between the explanations again is also important and uh, between the facts and the explanations. So, it, uh, so it's a repeated task that, uh, uh, that you have to ponder upon uh, before uh, fixing to your research problem. So steps to follow for identifying a research problem. So you have to uh, determining the area of research. I mean, uh, where, where you want to keen to do a research is the most important one. So you have to uh, pinpoint an uh, area where you want to work on uh, or the problem where you want to work on. And then you have to develop some mastery on that area and uh, where you want to uh, achieve your task. And then uh, in the recent trends, you have to also uh, de uh, study what has been conducted so far or what are the recent trends uh, that has been happening. So you need to have that kind of knowledge and you have to consider uh, the priority of the field of the study. And then you can draw the analogy or insight identifying the problem. Uh, so um, you have to, so, so if, if the problem is already been addressed in somewhere else, so uh, can you uh, replicate it in your population by simply replication is enough or what, else, what extra things can you add uh, to bring it to your population? Uh, so these are also needs to be uh, thought of. Okay. And then you pinpoint a, a specific aspect of the problem which you want to be investigated. So uh, where do you get these ideas? I mean, uh, where can you find these research problems? Uh, so sometimes, I mean, based on the theory, what you study uh, in your daily academic courses or these things, you can get the ideas. Oh, okay, maybe uh, this is a, uh, this uh, there is a, this theory says that uh, using these uh, interventions, maybe the palliative out care outcomes can be improved a lot. Then you can uh, test out those theory. The so that can that can become a part of the research problem. 
or sometimes your personal experience you have seen in a lot of patients suppose uh, in a particular cancer in a breast cancer you have you are seeing a lot of survivors who are coming with a very poor quality of life Uh, so what what to do with these i mean uh, now with the increase in cancer risk uh, a lot of uh, treatments are av- have become also available the survivor uh, cancer survivor population is increasing a lot so what are the burdens that these survivors are uh, facing as they ha- able to rehabilitate back into the society as they have able to get back to the employment or what are the things that are facing what are the social taboos they are facing so uh, when you in your experience when you look at all these aspects uh, so from there you develop uh, the research ideas you can get ideas okay maybe uh, addressing a small intervention to these cancer survivors or uh, developing cancer survivor groups uh, uh, in the hospital or in the community can address this problem so this kind of ideas you get from your personal and practical experience so uh, again interdisciplinary p- uh, perspectives when you talk to your colleagues when you talk to uh, uh, other um, members that who are uh, dealing uh, research in this area you can get the ideas when you go to the uh, when you go to the any conferences or when when you present when you talk to your colleagues you can get these ideas of uh, which area uh, is is uh, currently very uh, important or uh, where you can focus on and uh, and also sometimes out of dissatisfaction like i'm working it why is it not working so what else can what investigation can i do or intervention can i do and these all uh, are the areas where you can find or ignite your mind to to think of the research so uh, so it is to uh, again the research is done a uh, 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 review of literature becomes a very important part of this uh, so most of us uh, i think the most uh, co- uh, area where we go is to go to the google or to the other uh, search engines uh, where we do the literature review to get most of our uh, ideas so where the gaps exist in your understanding topic and how to fill that gap in the knowledge and uh, if a methodology is employed in the prior studies so most of us do look at the already the studies that are been done on this uh, uh, on this uh, research problem and uh, whether uh, the methodologies as i mentioned whether the methodologies applied elsewhere can can you apply such kind of methodology or should we combine the methodologies uh, so these are the things uh, you can think of and you have to determine if a similar study could be conducted in a different subject area so or a different study sample so as i mentioned and sometimes uh, where the most of, of the uh, people the um, those ideas can come from the further research so once you read an article Uh, and you finish the conclusion so mo- in most the con- in the conclusion they say okay this is what the study address but these are the limitations or this couldn't be address and this is the future direction the, of the research in this area should be so a lot of ideas can also come from that uh, implications for for further research the uh, fail, uh, the, the last paragraph of a further the uh, abstract or, or or the article uh, it tells you how the how further research should be done in this area to answer this uh, problem so a lot of ideas can also come up uh, from that part so uh, again the steps are to identify the concepts and the terms that make up your uh, topic statement this is very important uh, so what are the uh, even to search to do a literature review of your topic statement you need to identify those concepts and those key terms uh, to do the literature review so uh, that comes only from your uh, research question uh and uh, then you do a, a review of literature and then you look for the sources to broaden modify and strengthen your uh, initial thoughts and arguments of it so there can be sources of criticism sources of new ideas historical context or inter- uh, this is the same thing we said so uh, like uh, in the literature also there, there can be a, a different arguments someone can be a pro some papers can be pro to your research question and some some opposite uh, say uh, no this intervention doesn't work or this methodology doesn't work uh, on this one so there can there are uh, positive publications and negative publications as well so y- you have to uh, see whether which one is a counter argument for that one and uh, b- where you need to choose now uh, which one you need to choose okay so uh, coming to the next and again conceptualizing so once you have a research idea it's also important to know okay what kind of problem are you addressing it so is it just a descriptive problem uh, is it just a, uh, like descriptive research problem is like you want to just describe this is the amount of problem that is being existing 
or, or you want to see is there a difference between the groups uh, so um, suppose you want to compare the palliative care outcomes of various uh, cancers maybe uh, breast cancer uh, breast cancers versus uh, oral cancers you want to compare them uh, or, or is the relational question you want to address like what are the factors or the uh, what are the factors that are causing the poor uh, palliative care outcomes uh, in your population? So uh, this is how you can conceptualize your research. I mean, is it again a basic question? Is it uh, you want to address, okay, what are the uh, just a, a mere number or the descriptors or uh, people saying, okay, these are my problems or these are my needs? Uh, and then you, uh, the other thing is the difference in the groups. So if you want to have more than one population, more than one group in your study, so that you can compare them and contrast them. Uh, and then again, the factors, uh, which are the factors that are influencing your outcomes uh, in your, in your uh, research question. So, uh, and then uh, uh, finally, the, uh, there is also called a causation. So if you want to know if, the, if a certain factor is a cause to the problem, then, it, uh, then uh, a more further analysis is required to establish that causation. Uh, so that becomes a little uh, more tedious research to establishing a cause to the problem. Association is not the cause. I mean, uh, most of the papers, they associate, okay, these are the factors that are associated with this one. But to establish that uh, causal relationship, uh, it needs a very detailed kind of, a meticulous kind of study to establish that uh, causal relationship. So, um, and again, as I mentioned, the research often requires the measurements. Uh, so you need to know what your outcome is. What are the measurables of the outcome? Uh, is the outcome measurable uh, in these kind of uh, terms? And then what to do with those measurements? I mean, you have the outcome, you can measure it, but you also have to know, have a knowledge on uh, how to compare. So if you're uh, comparing two groups and you're comparing, uh, suppose the blood pressures of uh, two groups, so uh, what kind of measure that uh, you can use to compare this kind of blood pressure? So because blood pressure is a continuous measure, so can you use the means or the medians to compare these continuous measures? So, or you should categorize them as having um, with high blood pressure and low blood pressure, and then compare the groups, which becomes a, again a categorical question. So, uh, so this kind of basic uh, background of uh, analytical skills is also important. So you have to know what your uh, outcome measure is and how, what kind, of, what kind of nature your outcome measure is carrying on. And based on that, what kind of uh, simple analytical things uh, that will be applied uh, to answer your question. It, definitely a statistician will help you, but uh, even to talk to the statistician, as I said, you need to have that, uh, at least the basic uh, skills of understanding of what kind of measures uh, your research outcome is and how, how you can um, analyze them. So, you, um, so uh, this is very important, it becomes, and how to apply the instruments and techniques necessary to allow testing for the statistical sig significance. So you need to have that kind of uh, basic understanding as well. So uh, again, you have to think, uh, once you identify uh, your research problem, you have to again think, uh, is this problem, so uh, is it achievable? Is it researchable? The research question uh, I identified, uh, can it be further researched? Uh, is it the problem, is it new or avoid duplication? These are the things you need to ponder upon to get to a good, strong uh, research problem. Uh, and then the stronger your problem is, the more uh, it projects in the proposal and the more the chances you get, you can get the funding uh, because it, it also catches the reviewer. And, uh, and it becomes significant also. It's not like uh, your research, I mean, it is just not done it for a purpose. And you're really adding some significant knowledge uh, to that current gap. So uh, that's why it is very important to know whether your problem is a significant, is it uh, is a significant a problem? It can be generalized to the uh, other uh, societies or to the other populations. Uh, or is it only significant to only your clinical practice or clinical domain where it is? So uh, you have to be, you have to pondering uh, this, these things about your research question as well. Uh, so is, is this a problem significant? Can it be generalized to the entire uh, population or to the other populations? Is it ethical? Uh, you have to see, is it uh, ethical? Can, uh, what are the, the intervention, whatever you are doing, is it uh, ethical to give in the human subjects? And uh, again, is there a data available? So you can think of a very uh, good research question, but 
uh, if you can't uh, get the if you can't measure the outcomes you can't get the data then you can't uh, perform that uh, research project so and then again is the researcher qualified and uh, competent to address that uh, that research question so that that is where you form your team of uh, investigators and co-investigators who have good competencies in that research area and uh, who can help you and guide you uh, through your research project and then you have to maintain your enthusiasm throughout don't be discouraged on the initial uh, uh, aspects of it so multiple revisions can happen if someone says uh, this uh, this problem cannot be uh, done or this research uh, question or this methodology cannot be used then you have to think of other uh, ways to address that one and again the financial consideration i mean can your research problem uh, can be achieved uh, without funding or with funding or a minimal funding so these are all things you need to uh, ponder on uh, when you uh, think of the uh, research problem okay so you have to refine it uh, so once uh, you achieve uh, to a, uh, once you identify your problem you have to refine it and uh, make it more easily researchable as i said so uh, you have to limit and clarify the topic uh, you need to know what exactly the problem is you want to work on and again uh, is it a workable size i mean you can't uh, I, it depends i mean once you have a good team they have good uh, national and international team you can have multiple sites uh, to uh, get the data uh, you can collaborate with multiple inst institutions or the researchers across to gather such kind of data but you should also think about is it a worth, uh, worthable uh, size or uh, can i uh, do in a certain population should i limit the population or should i expand it to uh, a, a further uh, population as well okay and uh, again it should be concrete specific and workable questions is uh, where you need to uh, define your problem and uh, again uh, how to narrow down this topic so you have to choose uh, so to 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 na narrow down this kind of uh, view for your niche, uh, research problem uh, you need to think of a more than one lens as i said uh, through multiple as aspects and the each each components of it and the methodology uh, like i said uh what methodologies you want to use at the place uh, is it uh, is it generalizable can you uh, do it in the entire uh, population of india or to uh, limit to certain populations where the disease is specific or the condition is specific and then uh, which which ones you want to go is it the causal uh, is it a comparative to study or is it the cause relation study or is it the male female the difference uh, so this kind of things you need to think on Uh, so that you can narrow down your topic so once you once you identify a broad area which you want to work on then you have to ponder on all, all these aspects to narrow down uh, your uh, research question uh, to um, what time or place or person you want to uh, perform the research on so this becomes an another uh, important aspect of it but again you should be uh, conscious of not too much narrowing so that your uh, research becomes uh, only limited uh, uh, the use or the outcomes of the research cannot be generalizable so it, it should not be uh, too narrow so it should not be limiting to only one aspect of the uh, population or one section of the population which you can't use the uh, use it uh, generalizable uh, your results uh, to your larger audience so you have to, you have to be also uh, looking into that one that you are not uh, restricting yourselves to a very small uh, area okay so uh, so generalizing your results is also a very important aspect whenever you write a paper and all they will they will also ask you or, or in the uh, project also what is the public health significance of the project uh, uh, where, where can your results be applied to so on which population can benefit from your results of the uh, study so these are all things you need to think of Uh, so uh, depending on that uh, you need to uh, narrow down your research question and it should not be too narrow so and then uh, there is a so what test also you can uh, go through so do you have enough clarity and precision uh, can you demonstrate a researchable topic or issue or uh, identification of what should be studied uh, identification of the overarching overarching question identification of the key concepts and the terms and uh, articulation of the studies boundaries and parameters so uh, you can go through all these things so the generalizability some of them is the repetition of what i said uh, before so you have to always think of uh, this kind of uh, questions 
before uh, you final or fix your research uh, problem. So it should uh, contain a research problem uh, statement should contain a leading to ensure uh, that the interest is there. So your aim or that uh, research problems as, as I said, is the hooking statement uh, in the research proposal. So it should have that leading to help the reader to maintain the interest of over the study. And it should have some originality. Uh, so the, in the rationale, you will describe, okay, this is, this is why I want to do. But the idea, if the idea is original, uh, you have to focus that one. You have to declare the originality of the idea and uh, the indication and central focus of the study, where, uh, where it is and uh, in, in which population he wants to highlight it and the study significance of benefits, as I mentioned, uh, it's, always, it's always important. I mean, in most of the international uh, applications also, there's a separate section for public health significance. And even in, the, in our I, ICMR proposals, there's novelty uh, where you need to highlight what is the novelty of, of this project or what is the public health significance of this project. And uh, then you need, also need to express the variables and the relationships. So what you want to measure and uh, what is the relationship? Uh, so you only want to measure the outcomes. What else other than the outcomes? So uh, what are the other factors that affect the outcome that you need to measure? And what is the relationship of those factors to your outcome? So this all needs to be uh, considered. And then, uh, um, and then you can know, okay, okay, these are the things I need to measure in my project to address my, my research question. And again, the population being studied is also very important. So uh, mistakes to avoid is, uh, it should have some relevance. Uh, as I mentioned that the research problem should pass through that so what test. And uh, it, should, uh, it should have some relevant, it should elucidate the significance and all. So uh, make sure that all of them is there. And uh, this is just a small example saying that uh, the research question is the problem doesn't have, uh, the community doesn't have a hospital. That can't be a research question because I mean, what does it say? What does this statement uh, says? Only these, these are the things that you can address so that there's a need for a hospital and objective is to create a hospital and the method is to plan to build a hospital and evaluation is to measure if there's a hospital or not. So it should not be that vague. It should be very specific saying that, uh, okay, this is what I want to need. This is what I want to address. And these are the methodologies and these are the outcome measures and these are the other relationships that I want to, so it should be, uh, should have some uh, essence. It should not be these vague statements can't be, uh, uh, this can, uh, can't, can't be your uh, research problems, okay? So, um, so I'm just with this example, I want to uh, close. Uh, so, so suppose uh, uh, the problem is that the problems experienced by patient um, with, uh, with cancer and their, uh, needs to palliative care. So suppose this is, this is the, uh, research question, uh, this paper is wants to address. So what are the problems experienced by the cancer patients and what are the needs of the palliative care? So what they see is, okay, a large number. So first they're justifying themselves saying that the large number of patients living with uh, incurable cancer for longer periods of time, and they're confronted with a lot of, uh, complications and, uh, there are a lot of problems that are experienced by these uh, things. Uh, but then uh, the doctor, I mean, how to address this problem? Uh, although the patients are generally satisfied with the doctors, the problems in the quality of life are not always correctly identified and the needs uh, of the care are sometimes re remain unmet. So they have identified, they have now uh, uh, so consolidating their thoughts about this problem. So they found that although they're satisfied with the doctors, but there's still a lot of unmet needs uh, these uh, these uh, patients have and they're uh, they're unable to address those ones so uh, then how to how to measure these ones i mean can the quality of life questionnaires uh, can be used can they measure these unmet needs so they found that no the quality of life questionnaires itself is not sufficient the quality of life uh, will not capture uh, what are the unmet needs that uh, the, uh, the uh, these patients will have but uh, and how many of them want to seek the care uh, for these unmet needs so they found that uh, this, this itself is not sufficient. So they should need some other uh, good instruments. So the, uh, the problems and the validity of the instruments for this clinical use, uh, they need to address these kind of uh, things to address that problem. And finally, the study was conducted to learn more about the relationship between the problems experienced by the cancer patients in their quality of life and the unmet needs of the professional care. 
So using that, uh, this study attempted, uh, they had two questionnaires. Uh, so they came up with the uh, questionnaires, uh, like they asked the, the survey of the questionnaires, like what are their quality of life and also what are their unmet needs and whether they want to, the doctors to uh, address this kind of unmet needs. And that is how they made uh, this one. The study aims to identify how the patient's gender, age, and cancer type act as a determinants of the problem and unmet needs and to identify the structural deficits in the care. So this is the one example how you can consolidate your research from the background literature and how you can identify. So this is the, uh, again, uh, steps of formulating the research problem. So identify the area, dissect the sub area, select the interest, uh, interested sub area, raise the questions, do the literature review, uh, uh, and, and then formulate the objectives and assess the objectives and you need to double check it. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Raju. Thank you very much. It's such a wonderful lecture and beautifully you have defined that how to identify the problems. And uh, I think this is again a very good knowledge people must have got that there is something to talk about till for, for more than 45 minutes, something about uh, uh, how to formulate the problems and how to identify the problems. Are there any questions, Archana? Yes, ma'am. There's one question uh, from Dr. Nandini Walat. She says, uh, excellent presentation. Would you be able to present key learning points using one's gross concept of interest and gradually defining that using those points into a research question? Yeah, as I mentioned, I think uh, 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 there are no certain ways. I mean, there's no like a step, a clear cut step where you want to do. So it depends upon uh, really where your field is. Uh, again, the more the, uh, the literature review you do, more the knowledge you have about the, uh, the gap in the uh, gap or, or the research problem, the concept you have. And then discussing again with your uh, other colleagues, I think they, that is how you will narrow down uh, and discussing with again with the statistician, that is how you narrow down. There is no like a, a checklist of kind of thing where you can go down. And I mean, definitely those, uh, the, um, so, some of the, those things I mentioned in the presentation can be of helpful, but ultimately I think uh, it comes to your own capability, your own uh, the depth of knowledge you have in the discipline. Uh, where uh, it will help you in narrowing down the research question. Anyone you, else wants to know anything? Um, there is one more question from uh, Ms. Mamta Parihar. She says, thank you so much. If we are doing the same study in different settings, can it be considered a novel study? Uh, uh, I don't think so because again, simply just rep replicating uh, in a different setting will not be considered. But again, you can justify yourself. I mean, why? Why? Uh, uh, maybe you can say, I mean, in a different setting, is uh, am I validating it? Uh, validating the, whether the same uh, results are coming up and all. So that kind of justification, if you will be able to give, so that can uh, that can be considered. Uh, but it will not be considered as a novel. Uh, uh, thing unless you uh, come up with it, maybe I mean uh, again the literature background of that setting. Uh, if you know that uh, the certain methodologies or certain interventions doesn't work in that setting, and so that's why you want to uh, uh, replicate and see whether what are the factors that are uh, not affecting, uh, what are the factors that are uh, limiting that kind of thing. So. You can, it depends on how you put it or portray it, uh, how you justify your uh, question. That becomes the uh, uh, selling point of the research question. I think, Mamta, by seeing other study, you should try to find out that what are the gaps. And based on the Dr. Raju's lecture, what are the gaps in different areas by reading literature? Then uh, we can do. It's not that on that topic you cannot do. But what the previous researchers have left in uh, identifying the problem. That is what we, we need to do. Yes. Archana, are, are any other lecture? Um, no, ma'am, nothing, nothing yet, ma'am. Okay, so then uh, I think uh, it was such a nicely spent, uh, worth spending one hour, Raju. Thank you, ma'am. I Thanks think for the opportunity. we have uh, learned a lot. I think people must have learned. There are so many youngsters, DND, MD students and all other and palliative care community of country. 
it was a wonderful lecture you can read so many wonderful uh, comments are coming uh, on the chat box although they are not asking question but they are sending you comments uh, thank you very much so we will see you next week and next week will be again a very important topic i have heard dr joyita multiple times on this topic and i think it is such a wonderfully she takes this that how to uh, how to uh, how to formulate a research question so in continuation with this lecture focus topic that how we will plan to have a research question will be taken by dr joyita so don't miss next, uh, next week lecture 6:30 so see you all next week sharp before 6:30 join before 6:30 and uh, have a nice week thank you archana thank you nisha and once again thank you dr raju thank you ma'am thanks for the opportunity thank you